Hi, it's Jen back with the Simply Sweet Table Topper series. This time it's for May. I always think about Mother's Day and somehow the color purple is associated with that and we couldn't resist all the pretty beautiful flowers. And just like we've done throughout our series, we're adding a lot of fun with our hand embroidery detail with a little bit of beading. So today, um, what I will be going over for hand embroidery is just a review of the back stitch, the lazy daisy, but the new stitch today is the fly stitch. And if you're just now seeing the series, maybe for the first time, you're not even aware when we kicked this off, we started with our February project and that's a much longer video where I went into detail, every detail about how to prepare that background, how are we working with our beautiful applique shapes, which are prefused and laser cut, none of that tracing, none of that cutting out, that's all done for you. And then of course, a little bit of the machine applique and the full tutorial also on the hand embroidery. So this series will continue like this all throughout the 12 months, where of course the fabrics and the themes are changing and we're trying to show you a new stitch each month. And this one um, is the fly stitch, a great reference. And this one is in, in the book as well, is right here with me. And I know what that's like, you know, as a right-handed person, my husband's left-handed. He was always like, it's so hard to watch a person that's right-handed and try to reflect that and try to imagine that left-handed. So if that's you, be sure to pick up that guide. There's right and left-handed full tutorials and full, you know, like images um, per page. So that really helps you if you kind of want that reference. Everything we use is on the table. The light box is great, obviously, for illuminating the diagram. That'll be full size in your pattern. That'll automatically be included in your kit. Um, and it just makes it so easy to turn that light on. You get your beautiful background, trace everything on with a micron pen. Get that down, again, referring to our previous video. And now you're off to doing the hand embroidery. So we're gonna go ahead and come around Try to get a real good close up for you. Again, reviewing our back stitching and Lazy Daisy, but the new stitch again today will be our fly stitch. So I have a longer needle uh, threaded today. We had mentioned before that you can either use the embellishing needles, the chenille needles, whatever that is that's gonna accept the Pearl H, that's what we have right here. We've got the Hugo's Amazing Tape on that. You know, it's not like these other types of threads that have the ability to kind of open up and lock the thread in. This keeps it nice and secure so you're able to use that thread for a long time to come. And these struggles with threading the needle, we've got the needle threader. So I've got one strand of our pearl eight. And of course I've drawn on my lines and we're just going to review our back stitch. So we'll come up and go down a distance to get started. And you're going to want to try to keep that same distance consistent. And you're trying to split that line right, right there. And then you move back toward yourself. Maybe that's why they call that a back stitch. I don't know, it's been around forever, but this is what a back stitch does. And it's how you would establish your vine initially and you just keep moving back. Being careful to try to regulate the length of the stitches and to try to split that line every single time. Now for the Lazy Daisy, just a quick review. I generally will just put a dot where I want that to land. Remember this is hand embroidery, it should look handmade where you're not worrying about everything looking so uniform. Every Lazy Daisy is a little different than the next. And that's why I just draw the dot. And the only reason I even draw the dot is that's just my place, my reference of where I'm gonna come up. And I make sure I'm inside of my nice big loop And then if that's, if that's what you like, you like a nice open lazy daisy, then don't pull any more and just hop over on the other side 
and pull that down. That's all there is to a lazy daisy. Okay, so I'm gonna just um, actually cut my thread real quick. Some people have asked me, you know, how, what's the easiest way to just make a knot? You know, let's start with some basics. One thing you can do, and I like to do, is I wrap that around my index finger and I actually roll this. And then I scoot it down and what that does is it puts the knot at the very end. Sometimes when you tie a knot, there's this big tail and you have to trim it away. This has worked well for me since I've been hand embroidering many, many years ago. So with our fly stitch, and I'll just bring you the project so you can see where we're going. It has this beautiful texture. And we start at the tip of our leaf and we're going to work toward the flower. You can mark this as we did or just go for it. The reason I mark this is I kind of want to show you the regulation of a fly stitch and, and kind of the rhythm of that. So I'm going to come up right at the tip of that leaf because that's where we're going to start the stitch. And I'm going to come down Notice my dots right here, and again, these are optional. You don't have to draw that, but just for our reference, it makes it easier. Think of this where I'm going to come down about here. Now, that dot here, I'm coming up. And here, I'm going to go down right there. Where I had buried that stitch, I'm going to come right back up there. Notice I've got a loop trapped down here with my thumb. That's what creates that V. So again, if you know this is the place that we're going to hop across, you want to make sure you're about, that's in the midpoint. So I'm going to come down about there. Left. Come up at the left down at the right. See, I trapped that thread. Come up where we had previously gone down. And now we create the next V. Now I can go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way down there, almost all the way. Here, left, right, come up here, it's hard to see green on green, <laughs> right, about there. We capture our last one, and I'll just do a little bit of a stitch right into that valley, right into that valley of that flower. And that's it. That's all you have to do. We'll tie off on the back, just like we've done all the other stitches, tie off twice, and that is how to do your fly stitch. So you can see the hand embroidery is very doable. And hey, that was just our idea of a fun stitch on the leaf. Do your own thing if you prefer a different stitch. The book, of course, has many other options for you as well. We know one of our favorite things about this project is the beading. And we decided to do a variety of purple beads on this one. So that's a lot of fun as well. That's again where that straw needle comes into play. Um, so whatever size, size 11, it doesn't need to be any specific brand. Maybe you've got a needle at home that'll already fit those very tiny beads. And just like we did kind of back in the February one where I went through and explained 
that once all the hand embroidery is done, how to kind of fish those uh, beads in there and you're kind of just burying that thread as you kind of weave your way through and add those beautiful little delicate beads. So I cannot wait to show you the next month as well. I'm having a lot of fun with this series because I get to use so many different um, substrates that I love, all these different fabrics. We get to use all these beautiful threads and all the beautiful beads. So I'm having a blast. I hope you are too. If you haven't already subscribed, do that. Let your friend group know, maybe your quilt guild know. There's a lot of fun things happening at Shabby that you definitely want to be a part of it. And I'll see you next month for the Simply Sweet Tabletopper series for June.